I think we're ready now to start doing some basic arithmetic with Grasshopper. So I have here, I have a couple things that I, I, I have done. So first of all, I have gone full screen with Grasshopper. So before I was docked here on one side, but since we're going to start doing arithmetic, we're going to do mathematics. Uh, we don't really need to see any geometry on the Rhino viewport, so we can maximize the, the grasshopper canvas for the time being and have a little bit more of real estate for us to work. Um, and what I have done as well is I have dropped here two sliders uh, that range, as you can see here, they, they range from minus 10 to plus 10. And I have customized the numbers, sorry, their, their names to be value A and value B, uh, just for the sake of keeping things tidy. So um, I would like to do some algebra operations with these two numbers, some arithmetic. So what I would like to do is I would like to probably want to do like, what is the most simple arithmetic operation that I can think of? Uh, it's probably going to be adding two numbers together, right? So um, the logic is if this is an arithmetic operation, it's probably going to involve some math. And in Grasshopper, we have this step here, the second word is called maths, which basically has all the components that relate to um, doing any kind of like uh, mathematical operation. So it will be very simple. Now, just from looking at the components, I can very clearly see that this one here, the addition component is probably what I'm looking for. But if I drop this down, I can see that in operators, I have a lot of other components. So I have addition, multiplication, power, division, blah, 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 and subtraction. So this is probably where I want to be. I'm going to drag and drop an addition component here. I'm going to see that um, the input is the first item. The second is the second item that I want to add. Uh, and R is going to be the result of the addition. And uh, you can see that the type of data that they take, this icon, is not going to be exactly the 0 0.1. It's not going to be the number as I expected the other day, as I, as I explained before, it's not going to be just that. It's going to be this other one, more general placeholder that is called data, just because as we will explain down the road, um, this component has the capacity not just to add numbers together, but it can also add together other entities that allow for addition. So for example, it can add together two vectors, or you can add together two points, you can actually add points together. So because it doesn't want to be very prescriptive about only one type of data, it uses this icon that represents generic data, stuff that I may or may not be able to work with. Okay. So um, adding this and just for the sake of looking at the result, I'm going to plug a panel here. And we can see that the panel right now is empty because there's no data flowing into the component. So I'm going to connect this together. I'm going to connect the output of the slider here. And then I'm going to connect the other slider together here. And as you can see, we this box is taking the two inputs and is adding them together. So the result is going to be the value of five that is coming out of this component. And you can see that of course, as I, if I change any of the inputs, then the result updates automatically based on that operation. Okay. <clears throat> Now, we have learned how to do basic simple addition of two values, and we have add the value of L, A and B that we have added together. So what if we wanted to take A and B and also subtract them, multiply them, divide them and elevate one to the power of the other one? We saw that we have all those components here, right? So we have, for example, subtraction that I can drag and drop here. We have multiplication that I can drag and drop here. And we have division that I can drag and drop here. And I can start plugging in, I can change the size of this panel uh, a little bit. And I can start plugging in in here, this one, and this one to see the results and this one. Okay, and maybe we want to elevate one to the other power. So we want to use power. Uh, that's all we like in this is going to in, in this course, we want like a lot of power, right? Um, so we have the two uh, values here. And as I said before, we want these two values, we want to subtract them, multiply them, divide them and elevate one to the other. Okay. So your initial instinct might be Oh, okay, so if I have these two values, maybe I can just copy paste this here for each one of these operations, right? 
and then start linking them together um, so that I have the multiplication, the division, and you can see how these panels start, um, start updating with the correct information. Um, and this might be okay, depending on what you're trying to do. However, if my premise was, I want these two numbers, and I want to calculate the result of all these operations for these two numbers, then this way of working may not be the best one. I'm going to turn off, I'm actually going to turn off the profiler for now. Uh, this might not be the best way because what happens now is that if I change one value here, for example, only the addition component is updating. So if I wanted to see now these two values subtracted, I need to go here and make to make sure that I drag into the exact point or if I can't really nail the exact point, I can double click on the slider and then just write the component, the number 6.32. And then I will have to go here, 6.32 6 and 6.32 and 6.32. And obviously now I have the two same values, multiply, divide, blah, blah, blah. But as you can see, this is a little too tedious and time consuming, and it could get much worse if we have much more operations. So the one of the beautiful things about Grasshopper and visual programming with this paradigm of boxes and wires is that um, I can work with the, the parameters and keep them or much tighter. If I understand that the output of one component can actually feed um, multiple other inputs. So what I mean with that is that if I want to calculate for these two values, all these operations, then what I should do is instead of replicating the sliders, I can actually take this output and plug it into many, many different inputs. However, many I want, there's no limit for that. And then I can take this other output, the value of B and plug it into each one of these inputs one at a time. If I do this, now the two same values coming from the two same sliders have been linked to a bunch of other components down the road, you see? And now when I change one of them, all the values on all the children components, these ones here, and then as a consequence, all the panels, all of these are going to update synchronously. They're going to update because of the same change that I am applying to this slider. So if what I wanted was for the same two numbers to calculate all this uh, arithmetic, then this is a much better choice. It's a much better approach because everything is much tighter and all these operations are controlled by the same two sliders, the same two values. All right. Um, so depending on what you're doing and where you want to go, um, probably this is a much better approach uh, than the one that uh, we almost did. Okay. Let me show you another example of arithmetic operations that we can do with Grasshopper. Uh, so for example, that we can do parametrically. So for example, let's say we had the, the radius of a circle. I'm not talking about the circle as a geometry object. I'm talking about a circle with a particular radius. And we want it to be the ones who manually calculate what the length of that radius is, uh, the, that, what the length of that circle is, and what the area of that circle is. Um, you're probably familiar with the formula of the length of a circle is two times pi times the radius of the circle. And you're probably also familiar with the with the formula of the area of a circle is um, wait, it's pi times radius squared. Okay, so um, we can do that here, we can calculate, uh, we can calculate that that those two values arithmetically without actually having to create uh, a circle object. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit and then I'm going to add here a new slider. Um, I'm going to customize its range to go from one to five, for example, from zero to five. This one, I probably don't want a negative, uh, a negative value because I don't want negative radius, right? And I'm going to call this here radius. So for the for the length of that circle, if you remember, it's two times pi times the radius. So probably what we need to do is we need to multiply this radius times pi. And 
but how can we uh, figure out the value of pi? Mm, you might be inclined to say, well, maybe I just drop a component here and I say this is going to be drop 3.1259, etc., etc. And then this is what I plug in here and I call this pi. This could be a way to go, uh, but I don't think this is a great idea just because um, it's very common in Grasshopper to use sliders as parameters that the user or the designer can customize and they can play with. And it just so turns, so turns out that for this equation to work, for this formula to work, this has to be the value of pi and no other value. So if somebody sees this as lighter, doesn't understand uh, what it's doing and goes into the temptation of changing it, then it's really, really going to mess up with the logic of the process that we're doing because this will not be the correct length of that circle anymore. Okay, so that's why I don't like using sliders for values that are not supposed to change. Um, I don't think it's a good practice. So I'm going to show you two techniques to, to do that. One of them is the fact that the value of pi is such a common constant that it actually has its own component. Really, it does have its own component. So here in utilities, it has, uh, you can go in math utilities, you can go here and this component returns a factor of pi. Uh, I'm going to drop a panel here and I'm going to read this. You can see that here it's giving me the value of pi. So if I multiply 0 0.5 times pi, I get half pi. Okay. And, um, and another thing that's interesting is that this component doesn't give us the number pi. It gives us a factor of pi. And if I look at the input, it tells me what is the, the factor that I want to multiply pi by. And we can see that in the tooltip, it says that it has one locally defined value. It has a predefined, it has a default value, which is the value of one. And that's why pi, this component is giving us one pi by default without plugging anything in. Some components, when you drop them, they have default values that get overwritten if you plug in like something like this here. So if I were to plug in 0 0.5, this will give us half pi, which then ends up in like whatever mess. This is not, this is not great. I just did control C to undo that change. Okay. So if you remember the formula of uh, the length of the circle is two pi times the radius. So this will come in very handy because here now we can plug the number two to multiply to factor pi by two and then end up with the right uh, length of the, of the radius. So you may also, as I said before, you may well, oh, but how, why can I just write a slider here with the value of two and then maybe I can just put here a sign that says, oh, please do not touch this, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Maybe, but I still don't think it's a great idea to use sliders to represent values that should not change for the same reasons that I explained before. So um, what I find uh, a better way to do that is to, um, when you want to represent values that should not be changed and should not be touched with, um, I usually use panels instead to represent that data because panels um, you can use them to display data if you wire something to the input. But if you double click on the panel, you can actually write inside of the panel. So I can say, hello, parametric camp. And then I can just have that display on the panel, right? But also, I can also just say, I going to write here the value of two. Okay. And on top of that, I'm going to right click here and I'm going to say, I'm going to deactivate multi-line data so that it looks a little closer to this um, typical structure of how data is represented in Grasshopper. We haven't seen yet what this number means here, what this number means here. We will see that down the road in this course. But for the time being, what's important is that here we have the value of two handwritten here. We have two, we could do a bunch of numbers. We can have a list of numbers, but we're just going to have this one number, the value of two, that is going to be output here to uh, n, 
and then this is going to give us 2 pi, which multiplied by point by, by 1 unit, is going to give us that the length of this circle is going to be 2 times pi. 2 pi times the radius, which is 1. Okay? If this was whatever value, then this would be the length of that circle. Right? Um, you could argue, well, but if somebody comes in here and double clicks, they will be able to change uh, the value of the panel. That is true. And there's not really a way to lock this so that nobody can touch it and nobody can modify it. But it just so happens that UI wise, if you see a slider, you will feel like you want to change it. But if you see a panel, it's kind of saying like, ah, you should probably not mess with this. Uh, and also another common trick is that to just move the inputs, the inputs that you want people to see very far away from the actual operations. Uh, but we will get uh, we will get more into that later on. Okay. So now for the same radius, I will want to calculate uh, the area uh, of that circle. And remember, the area is pi times uh, radius squared. So that will be very simple to do here in polynomials. You can square numbers, so I can square this number, and I can multiply it by a simple factor of pi. So I can double click here and say pi, and then this will be the area of that circle. Uh, radius squared multiplied by pi. And here you go. Uh, simple arithmetic operations with native uh, mathematical components in Grasshopper. Okay, um, I think we are at a good point now. Our definition is starting to get a bit more complex. So we are at a great point to start talking about how to keep our, de our definitions clean, tidy, and, and in order. Okay, let's take a look at that.